Hi friends, Denise here from Eat, Play, Love. And my furnace just turned on. I live in Colorado and there was no school today. And actually there's no school tomorrow. It is one million percent snowing outside and there's a chance of snow, snow and snow in the forecast. So I'm out in the garage you know, I'm wearing this cute Zella romper. Zella is a Nordstrom activewear brand. <laughs> you know, it's free people vibe-ish. And I'm also wearing a naked cashmere cardigan that I got at the bins. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's my breakdown of what I'm wearing. I just sourced this at the Goodwill yesterday and I have a confession to make. I have sinned, I have sinned. It may have been my last video when I said I wasn't going to go sourcing until I completely cleared the rack behind me and I did something bad. And I did something good. The first thing I did that was good is that I posted close to 60 items that were unposted, not yet posted, and I think that's a celebration. <laughs> The other thing I did was I went out sourcing yesterday knowing that today would be snowy and shut down, so I thought I could run with it, and boy, did I run with the sourcing. I'm going to get started on what I sourced. Let me go grab my numbers. I may do a little hybrid of standing up and sitting down throughout this video. I went to the Goodwill and I picked up 14 items for $129. I went to Salvation Army where I picked up 15 items for $93.47. And then I decided I had to have two items that I didn't think I wanted. So that was at an additional $15.98. I went to the ARC and I purchased 23 items for $189. That was a big one. And then I popped into another Goodwill, a smaller one, and I picked up three items for $11.02. The grand total of all of those numbers was 57 items, mas or menos, for $486.12, which leaves me at $8.50 cost of goods across the board. The cheapest thing I bought was probably like $1.50, and the most expensive thing I bought was $16.99 for a suit for my daughter. So that was the range of what I spent on these trips. I will probably touch on what I spent for a particular item. I'm gonna get started right away. I have some fun labels to show you and I feel, I feel like yesterday was just one of those thrifting trips that shows me where I want to be going, what I'm looking for, what I'm passing on. I know easily I can say a thousand or thousands of items passed through my fingertips and I only came home with 55. First random thing that I bought was this Pottery Barn Candelabra. I have sold a couple of Pottery Barn um, candle pieces before and they sell pretty well. This is really substantial. Oh gosh, did I get myself into trouble in the shipping department with this one? I may have. This weighs four pounds, two ounces, which means I've got 14 ounces to ship that bad boy out. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It is a really substantial piece. Obviously it's silver plated. It's from Pottery Barn. It's not like pure silver or anything, but people love Pottery Barn. Even though it's tarnished, has some waxy remnants. I mean, that's what gives it pizzazz. So this is the one kind of random thing that I purchased. I'm gonna say that. And then I also bought a piece that turned out to not be authentic. In my mind, I am 99.9% .9 certain it is not authentic and I will go over the details of the dupe I bought. 
and I didn't even think twice about it. I just looked at the label and I walked out the door and I was all excited and then I got home and I, things were just not adding up. I'll talk about those details. The first piece that I wanted to share is a pair of Monroe wide leg sweatpants. Here is that Monroe label. They make fancy sweatpants. And it turns out at this thrift store that I feel like one person donated almost all of their wide leg sweatpants, these included. The next pair that I have conspired to believe was donated by the same person is a pair of extra small wide leg pants by the brand Air, which stands for all year round. They make delicious jeans that people absolutely love. So take a closer look at that tag, make friends with it. If you find them, buy them. I would say <laughs> the majority of brands that I picked up, I, I'm going to go on on a limb and say everything that I picked up, I would recommend picking up. I did pick up a brand that I've never sourced before, so we'll see how it does. This was such a cute little surprise, like just delighted my heart because I haven't found any jeans by this brand lately. This is a very popular jean company, a high-end jean company, and these are just some plain old gray sweatpants. But it turns out these plain old gray sweatpants are by our best friend, the mother jean company. <laughs> I don't know what they sell for. I'm not going to run comps on a pair of $9 sweatpants that are by mother. I'm just going to buy them. That's just how it goes. I will share what I ran comps on to see if it was worth me picking up or not. I got these adorable free people movement size extra small wide leg pants. They snap along the leg line and they are deliciously long. There is the movement tag if you're not familiar with it. And then, oh my goodness, the next item I found, I did one of these. Jaw drop, right in the cert. And guess what, friends, I've always told you this, sourcing strategy, always check the rack if there's a fitting room outside of the fitting room because people, the things that people pick, who are not out thrifting to resell, people who are just out shopping to thrift and try on clothes and then don't buy things that don't fit them. Imagine that. <laughs> I feel like everything I buy wouldn't fit me. Um, those are kind of the things that tend to be little golden nuggets that maybe you would have passed by. So always check that rack. That is one of my strategies. Okay, these are just a pair of wide leg sweatpants. Do you see the vibe here? One, two, three. I'm gonna say four pairs donated by the same person. The brand on this look very closely, friends. It's called Susie Condi. Susie Condi. She makes these gorgeous terry like sweats and one piece suits. I sold a new with tags one piece suit of hers, I think for $250. I anticipate being able to list these for at least 60. I believe the person who owned them cut this little kind of like cottony band that would have brought these in a little bit closer like a regular jogger bottom off the bottom. So I will have to disclose that. I'm not taking this one off the hanger. It's kind of boring but important. This is just an Athleta long sleeve athletic top. It's an old one. It's got some wash wear but it'll be great for this is really live show purchase. I also found two smart wool bras. I love finding smart wool. There's the logo. People love wool bras, especially when you're camping because they don't need to be washed every day after you wear them. They wick away sweat. They keep you warm. They keep you cool in the summer. So always pick up smart wool bras. I often talk about the two phenomenon where you find two of a similar item. Someone donates both of the items. It didn't happen a lot yesterday, but it happened enough. Speaking of twos, I found two of these Lululemon 
Let me see if I can focus in on this. <laughs> I'd have to actually get on the side with the logo. Just very, um, a soft, I forget what they're called, soft something bras, camo. They're both a size six A, B cup bras. And I also found this amazing Align tank in this really cute Green color. Green. Green is so hot right now. This is a size six. If you have more interest in learning about Lululemon, I'm sorry, it's a size eight. There is the size dot. It's in the, gonna be in the left side where the pad goes in kind of the bra support area. And I have a video on determining style and size and where to look for size dot on Lululemon pieces. If you'd like to dive a little bit deeper and expand your ability to really make money selling Lululemon. I found these Lululemon pants that have a really fun print to them. I would say they are a 25 inch inseam and it took me a really long time. I first realized that these were Lulu because of that because of the logo on the zip pocket. And it took me, I mean, I stood there for a hot minute trying to find the logo. And then finally, like even right now, finally, like I felt it. And then I was like, oh, there's the logo. Oh my goodness. Hold on, hold on, hold your horses. Stop the presses. Here it is. Wow, it's right there. I mean, I am rarely fooled by not being able to find a Lululemon logo, but right there, this one just blended like right in. Could not see. I am a fan of selling packed organic. I have talked about before a packed organic sample sale that I went to. And so packed is a brand that is sold in Whole Foods. It's sold online by the company. And these actually need to be washed. All of this stuff needs to be washed. It has some marks on it. These are long, 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 like very, very long, just ribbed 100% cotton leggings in beautiful condition. For the first time ever, 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 I sourced a pair of Lululemon Align joggers. I haven't found them before. So this is what the Align jogger looks like. I don't own them because here's our little V, which we always look for with Aligns. The pockets are in the front. Um, they run short, so I personally don't own them. These are not my size. They're a size six, but if they were an eight or a 10, they might go into rotation for a little, for a minute. These are just basic free people sweatpants. Here's the movement logo I was telling you guys about a minute ago. Kind of looks like a pine cone of some sort. I have asked, I have like done some research, like what does the logo mean? Couldn't tell you now, but very kind of nondescript, just basic black sweats. And the last pair of pants in a size small that I picked up it's just a pair of white jeans. What is this girl thinking? Maybe I have like spring and summer on my mind. The brand is what did it for me. These are denim forum. That's what the label in the back looks like. This is what the internal label looks like. Denim forum is um, Aritzia. And Aritzia is a Canadian company. We don't find a, a lot of Aritzia in the States. Um, these are called the Joni High Rise Loose. There are 29 long. They were really, really, really in beautiful condition. I didn't see any marks to speak of. It is a little out of pocket for me to buy white jeans. So I'm gonna keep you posted on how these do. They were $10.99 beautiful silk blouse. I mean, it is just airy, breezy, a little bit of floral pattern to it. Take a look at this label. So this is a For Love and Liberty piece. Okay, For Love and Liberty. Take a look again. I've sold For Love and Liberty before. For Love and Liberty is uh, Johnny Woods. So 
keep an eye out for this. What's great about this, this thrift store absolutely 1000% marks up Johnny was. They didn't pick up that this was Johnny was. And also these little scan tags like that are usually a good indicator that it's a little bit of a like more high end piece. So um, I only paid $5.99 for that. <laughs> this is just a free people piece that I picked up because um, I did have that free people show. I like having free people shows. And I also like picking up free people that does um, fit a variety of sizes. This piece is actually a small, but I could easily put this on. Let's just do it. Let's just see what it fits like. It's a small, but I feel confident in my decision to pick this up because in a live show, I'll just share the pit to pit. And then I open that window of who this would actually fit. So maybe someone only searches for their size, a size large, a size extra large. But when I'm on a live show, someone sees something they like, and then I say, oh, the pit to pit on this is actually 28. They love the color of it. So even though this is a small, it's funny, it has a really high seam on the side, which may be a deterrent as far as who's gonna pick this up. This is a super roomy fit super roomy. Has some ruffling and fun details in the front. Kind of a crinkly fabric, floral print. People, I picked up this Intimately piece. This is just a nightshirt. I have one in pink. I have sold this one before, so I found another one. And uh, it looks like there's close to no wash wear. Here's another Free People movement piece. Now look at this. This, I'm gonna show you this tag. The very, very bottom, it says the size. The very, very bottom down there. Yeah, that says small. That says small. This is actually, oh my goodness. I think it's a 28 pit to pit. So I was saying in my live show, the other day my live free people show i don't know why they don't just make their clothes one size like why do they call this a small why don't they just say hey this will fit everybody that's what i would call it i would call it one size it's long it's tunicky it's flowy it's super fun there's nothing about this shirt that wouldn't fit anybody anybody <laughs> so it's like why call it a small i don't know that's just my own two cents, interjecting my opinion on the matter. Here we go. People love this logo, right? Just like Lulu. If they are buying a free people movement piece, they want it to have the logo. Some of the finds that I made the other day that were Lululemon, this piece needs to be cleaned up. I'm just gonna say that out loud. I have a little tag I have to cut off here. Um, this needs a little TLC. This needs me to hydrogen peroxide baking soda it. This is just a long sleeve top by Lululemon. And, um, you know, I was having a hard time finding Lulu pieces. And then guess what? Of course. Look what I find. Why did I find this? I found this because that... The gummy logo, <laughs> it's right here. The gummy logo and uh, people's ability to really not find the low hanging fruit of Lululemon, that's this. And people love the gummy logo pieces. It's newer. So a piece like that, if it doesn't have the rip tag in it, it's gonna be a little bit harder to determine what size it is and that's just a part of it. And it's okay to not call it a number size. It's okay to say this is measuring like an extra small, small, a small, a medium, a large, whatever that measurement seems to be. If it's a, on a shirt like that, if it's a 19 pit to pit, it's actually going to be a small for Lulu because a lot of the tops like that are actually produced to be like oversized. A tad, not like huge, but not free people oversized. This I found for $6.99 in the dress section, which I was very happy about. <laughs> Little cute organic cotton crew neck. This is a size small. 
All right, the jury's out on this piece, okay? I found this because I love picking up Breton Stripe pieces. This is Breton Stripe, B-R-E-T-O-N. It is a French maritime vibe. Fishermen in France wear shirts like this and it's really a chic French look. That's basically it. Now this piece in general didn't have a tag up top, but it had this tag. And of course I was like, ooh, okay, I'll buy this because the tag on the inside said made in New York, which like, I was like, okay, if it's made in New York, it's gotta be a cool brand. I'll dig a little deeper. It was only priced at $2.99 and I'll figure out who produced this. Well, after I got it home and I started looking a little bit closer, I kind of determined that the sleeve seemed a little on the skinny side, but um, to me, I know, you know, it's not much different than this Lululemon crew neck that I consider to be a small. So it's wide, but then it has small sleeves. So for a moment, especially with the pockets, I thought it may be like a girl's tunic top. I'm gonna have to try it on, and this is not one you're seeing me in on camera because I kind of don't have little skinny arms, so I don't know how this is gonna go over. I might have my daughter try it on first. I'm not sure if that's a dress. What'll happen with this piece? I don't have the brand. This is one of my favorite brands to source. It's very obscure. The brand is called Gramici. They make rock climbing and mountaineering clothes. These are vintage made in the USA ones. They always have a gusset here and that allows climbers to stretch their legs out when they're climbing. Um, I love picking them up. I'll put them in my closet for like 40 bucks easily. A jacket I just sold today was an Ibex jacket. I think I shared it in my last sourcing video. And here is the label for Ibex. Ibex is made in the USA and it is also, see that, made in the USA. And it is also merino wool pieces. Here is the Ibex little logo, best friend. Now this is a skirt and it has wool kind of shorts on the inside. I have sold a smart wool piece like this very recently, so I feel confident that this will sell quickly. I'm anticipating for about $48. <laughs> these are just a pair of cool men's pants, and I don't usually pick up these pants a lot. I believe this style is retired, and I did pick these up because they are flannel lined, which is just like a little bit, makes them just a little bit more interesting than the regular pants like this. So just like a little insight as to why. <laughs> Another piece I found today, yesterday was um, this just basic Lululemon V-neck shirt. I love the color of it. I may keep it, but here we go, friends. Eyes on the prize, eyes on the prize. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see that. There is the gummy logo. When you're going through those racks, your radar has to be on, your eyes have to be open, and you just have to be ready to go. It's like getting into the zone. I am just gonna quickly pull these three pieces because I found three pieces of the same brand, and I've never found this brand before, but I wasn't gonna pass on it because it's European. The brand is called Bergens of Norway. Bergens of Norway, never heard of it. Um, my husband has, because he has traveled to Norway and Europe a lot. These are all merino wool t-shirt pieces, just base layer. We have a little bit of a blues clues vibe going on here. <laughs> the blue striped and the green striped, and then a long sleeve piece. So someone must have donated their little collection of their Bergens of Norway, and I am 100% here for it, because I paid $4.99. And Lululemon men's t-shirt, cotton, like no big deal, has the rip tag, so I know it's a medium, but here we go, friends. For a men's piece, obviously, you can see this. I have another detail to show you. Men's piece, 
silver logo, no big deal. But if you're going through the racks, like when you're sorting through and you're just looking in the front and you're not looking on the back, if you see these three little stitching right here, that's a good indicator that you wanna look a little bit more closely to see if it's a Lululemon piece. This is kind of the um, red flag for inspect Lululemon for men. I'll just show you now because I have another Lululemon piece. This one's a little bit more synthetic. A Lululemon men's logo can also look like this. Have that little square around it. So that is authentic. It's just how they made the men's logo. Here is a cute free people piece. It needs a good um, kind of soaking. It's a lighter piece, but the pieces with the sleeves that are these patchworky, floral, intricate um, embroidery detail on them are always super, super popular pieces. Oh like this piece is so amazing. So this is an 80s Adidas, <laughs> as they say in Europe. In the United States, we say Adidas, but Adidas is really how you're supposed to pronounce it. This is like an 80s track suit, just the jacket, unfortunately. But the special thing about this piece is that um, this makes the piece more valuable. This is actually a made in the USA vintage era Adidas piece, which is incredible incredible the condition of it is just gorgeous and i don't know i feel like it might sell for like 68 bucks but i could be posting it for closer to 88. this was new to me but it was at one of the fixed price places so they don't mark up things um this is a soma piece which is like a bra and intimates this is called Soma Weekend. It's just a black hooded cardigan. Kind of very, very lounge weary pockets, really beautiful, luscious cuffs, hood. Hard for me to pass up for $7.99. I found this Athleta Windbreaker. I think it's a little bit of an older style, but um, I love having jackets and things like this available for when I do my Athleta in Lululemon live shows. Speaking of Lululemon, I found these gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at these pink aligns, size 10. We know there are lines. This color in particular is actually double lined. They started making some of their colors double lined. So, you know, just to sort of give you an overall more cinched look in their pants. Um, I don't mind a dimple or two, so I like the single layers, but <laughs> those are the double layers. Oh, this is a great piece. Orla Kylie is one of my favorite brands to find. I may go pull a couple of bags that I'd like to show you guys. Orla Kylie, I believe it's a brand from the UK. I actually am almost positive it's from Ireland. She makes all these kind of Marameco vibed, floral prints and patterns. I think I have a bag, my goodness, to post right in here. And then I have another one that I have thrifted that I'm thinking of. Um, I had it in my personal collection and I'm thinking of posting it. Here's another, here's like the Orla Kylie. It's like the wax looking canvas. There's the label on that. And this one has a little bit of wear, but I picked it up anyway because people love, love, love Orla Kylie. This is just a really basic, I was gonna say free people, Lululemon tank, and it was inside out. So that's how I scored this piece because no one saw the logo. I could tell from kind of like how the top looked and the stripey bits to it. This isn't gonna sell for very much, guys. It's probably like a $15, $18 sale. So I'm not recommending buying this. I like to have pieces like this for my live show because people like to bundle on a live show. And typically if someone buys a more expensive piece, they're looking for a piece at a cheaper price point to bundle and wear with their pants or whatever they just picked up. So that's why I bought that. I picked up a men's marine layer shirt. I love picking up marine layer. Very substantial pieces. People love marine layer. 
Here is the outside logo at the bottom of the shirt. Basic t-shirt. I don't pick up a lot of basic t-shirts, but if it's marine layer, I always pick it up. Speaking of basic t-shirt, this is another wool piece, okay? So this is Icebreaker. Icebreaker is an amazing company to pick up. People love Icebreaker, it's merino wool. And as I said, in the winter, it insulates you and in the summer, it cools you off. It wicks away moisture. If you're sweating, the wool wicks away the moisture from your body, keeps you more temper temperature regulated. That's why people seek it out. You know, I can't shy away from a gauze cotton piece, but I have turned down all the Universal Threads one lately. I went into, I had a little phase where I got lucky selling Universal Threads pieces. I'm not picking them up anymore, but this one was actually in the nighty department, and this is Three Dots, which, you know, I think is a really good brand. And um, odds are good this could go into my personal closet for a little bit. I could see lounging around the house in this. I found this great old school Patagonia raincoat. It's just yellow. It's got all sorts of pockets and stuff. And I couldn't really date it. And um, I realized it was made in Vietnam. So just trying to figure out eras of when it was made. And typically on the majority of Patagonia labels they'll put when something was produced. It'll say like FA06 and that means fall of 2006. I mean I've seen pieces even say like FA99 or whatever. So um, this one doesn't have it but what is cool about it is that this tag has the mail-in address if you want to contact Patagonia which to me feels like it's probably 20-25 years old. Doesn't have visit patagonia.com. A friend of mine sourced these for me. These are a pair of Lululemon Align shorts. I believe they are the six inch shorts and they're a size 14, which I am so happy about. I have people come to my shows all the time looking for 12s and 14s and I finally have a piece now to sell. I recently talked about this brand. It's called Quince. I sold a pair of cashmere joggers. Now Quince is an online brand who's really trying to compete with like the Jenny Canes of the world. They're producing very neutral fabrics, linens. This is linen, um, cashmere, leather. They're really trying to chip away at like the Madewell vibe saying they're sustainably made. I didn't know how the brand would do as a whole when I found the cashmere joggers and I sold them within a week or two. So this is my second test for the brand Quince to see how it does. It definitely checks all the boxes. It's very Madewell, modern, Everlane, um, Jenny Kane. It definitely feels like all of those brands. So we'll see how it does. And it's an extra large, which I think is win-win to me. That's the Lululemon piece. And here's another Lululemon piece. We just have our little basic silver logo. Now these types of shirts typically have the size in the waistband, like a swiftly, but I didn't see the size in this one. It just says better every day. So I'm just going to take some measurements and post it for what size I think it is. I believe to me it looks like it's a large or an extra large and take a look here friends. There's our three little lines. And my last little set of twos, which these are the two pieces that I passed on and then I decided to actually buy. And that is two vintage polo Ralph Lauren um, sweatshirts. They are thermal in the hood. That's good. I may just keep one of these for myself. The reason why I was gonna pass on them is that I noticed that there were some holes around the cuffs. And this one kind of has some holes in the hoodie area, but ultimately I decided it's part of what this piece, these pieces, they're vintage, they're very soft and broken in. And um, 
that's part of what tells the story of these pieces. The language I typically like to use for pieces that are broken in is that they have a patina to them that uh, tells a story. I mean, that's just what I say. So the cuffs are really wide. They're not like tight. Oh, I love this. This is so, so, so cute. So cute. I'm not keeping this, but it is comfy, cozy, broken in. I am predicting posting these for 55 and hopefully getting 40 to 45 for them. Okay, the first random thing I picked up is just a pair of Spanx body shaping pantyhose. And I typically keep these. I like to wear them. They're like kind of come down on the leg and they're more supportive in the top, but they're sheer here. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So $1.99. I like to buy those for myself. Brand new in package. Here's a pair of Rothy's. A friend of mine picked these up. They were $6. And let me just show you if you don't know. You take out the insoles in Rothy's and then you look at the tag. And to show that they are authentic, they're going to say underneath the six and a half, country of origin made in China. Made in the USA. They usually have the little tag up here as well, but sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. Don't get weird about it. Um, also like this kind of insole, they're not really making dupes with this kind of insole. They're typically gonna be plain. So these are legitimate. Rothy's on a whole have pretty much cooled down as far as selling quickly and selling for a lot. But honestly, a pair like that is kind of special. I think I can post them still for about 50 bucks. I love picking up Marameco and this just happens to be a Clinique collab. So it was a dollar. I bought it. Nothing special. Don't expect a lot for it. These are super cute Uggs platform foamy sandals. We're going into the season. They just need to be cleaned up. Like the footbed looks great, but the soles just need a little loving. I'm gonna assume that a um, magic eraser is gonna be my best friend to get these cleaned up. And also speaking of spring, I found these really cool Chacos. These are kind of lightweight foam sold slip-on Chacos, a little bit more of like a slide or like a flip-flop than the big strappy around your ankle Chacos. So yeah, I picked those up because they were cheap. They were five bucks. And then I found these Madewell Beauties, which I think sold for $1.45 on Madewell's site. They do have the lovely wooden sole, which I think is very, very timeless and popular. I got these for $9 and Madewell always prints their style number in there. And these are a size eight and a half. It's funny because they have a buckle on the toe area, but it's actually not adjustable. It's just decorative. <laughs> so I'm going to note that. But it definitely has a Dr. Scholl European cloggy vibe, which I found to be very cute. And the last thing I sourced before the bad choice um, is just this really cute vintage 90s leather. And um, it does have this stain on it, but... It's just this like straw kind of tote bag. It's clean on the inside. It was six bucks. I have sold one of these before. People really do like them. So I used to use a bag like this as my school bag. When I was in high school, we would put our binders and our trapper keeper and our pens right in here. Oh. This was, our now I'm gonna break to the bad news. I picked up this trench coaty looking piece. Trench coaty looking piece that has this really beautiful, well, I might take that back. At the store, I thought it had a really beautiful wool liner and there's buttons so you can take it out. And now for the crappy news. This is a dupe. This is fake Ralph Lauren. Boo, look at that label. The stitching around it is actually just horrid. 
poor Ralph would just be horrified by the construction and the materials they used of this piece. So this piece is going back. See how this is open here? And the sewing and the stitching is just poop. <laughs> then the materials are junky. Then I started to take a closer look. Like actually look at the fabric in the pockets. It's so cheap. Like I can see through it. That is so not Ralph Lauren. And the last red flag. So when I saw it, I just saw the polo and then I saw this. And I thought, oh wow, like that looks nice. It's a little microfiber-ish, like it's not a canvas or something, which seemed a little off to me and I couldn't find a materials tag, which seemed a little off to me. <laughs> so I was like, anyway, I'm like, it's only 11 bucks, I'll just pick it up. So the last straw that broke my dupes back is that, look at these buttons. They actually say Polo Club. Polo Club. No, that's not a thing. Like Polo Club, maybe. Like Beverly Hills Polo Club, that's a thing. Ralph Lauren Polo Club, no, that's not a thing. I will not be selling this. I will not be um, doing anything but returning it and telling the thrift store that they're selling a fake Ralph Lauren piece and that they should just not do that in general. I actually live in an area where I just assume that a piece like Polo by Ralph Lauren is not going to be a dupe. Like I just live in a world where I'm like, a Polo dupe? Like, no. And then I'm like doing the math and I'm like, yes, yes, yeah, like check, 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 three strikes. You are out, trench coat. So that was a little bit of a bummer because that probably would have been at least a $75 profit. Womp. Um, and that's all I have, friends. That is my big thrift haul. That is my big spend of $486. This haul potentially has a value of about $15 to $1,800 to it. So I'm hoping to turn $486 into $1,800, which would mean a $1,000 profit on these 50 items. Numbers. Keep an eye out for my latest Ship With Me videos, and I'm gonna be snowed in tomorrow as well, so I will be taking the time to clean all of these items and then photograph them and get them listed in my closet. And then I'm just gonna tick away at that rack. I hope you enjoyed this haul. If there's any brand that is new to to you that you'll keep your eyes open for please let me know in the comments if there of course are any brands that you're like why did you buy that Denise not a good choice please tell me now I still have the opportunity to return some of these if you think I made a bad investment and uh, that's all I have I'll see you guys hopefully sooner than later and as I'd like to say from this snowy snowy day may kindness light your path Take care.